Hi, my name is Nadia Lutz, and I'm going to talk to you about parosmia after COVID today. Um, I had COVID for a little bit now, I had anosmia, and now parosmia comes and goes. Um, so I did two other videos so far um, about getting your smell back. Uh, so make sure you check those out. We'll do it. Just I'll just show you exactly what we did, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it or anything like that. But we basically dealt with the cranial nerves and we came up with some different drills so that um, you can get your taste and smell back. So make sure you check those two out because even though you're thinking parosmia is completely different, it actually um, affects a lot of the same cranial nerves. So make sure you look at video one and two as well. We're not gonna talk about cranial nerves as much in this video. We're gonna talk about different areas of the brain. Um, you can see that the thalamus, uh, which is right here, and it, let me just get my little pointer. It's right here. And that is responsible for 98% of sensory input. It's also the gatekeeper. So if you were walking in the woods and you um, saw a snake, it would decide if that snake was a danger to you or not. So it's responsible for deciding whether it sends you into fight and flight or keeps you in um, rest digest. It also is um, a recognizer of disgust signals, which is a big component of parosmia. So we're gonna be doing drills that deal with the thalamus. Also the amygdala, that's another threat detector. And that will also determine whether you go into fight or flight. And it also has um, emotional memory. So with food, we have a lot of emotions tied to food. We remember special dinners and things our parents made and we made for our kids. Um, so the amygdala is very much involved. Now the insula as well is um, going to be a key component. So we're going to do a lot of drills for the insula. That actually processes the sense of disgust to smells. And it's also responsible for when we have an excessive response to something, which we clearly do with parosmia. Um, all of this information is then sent to the frontal lobe and that is responsible for keeping you out of fight and flight or going in. So all the drills that we're gonna be doing today are going to affect one of these parts of the brain. Okay, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about why I'm having you do some of these crazy things so that um, it makes sense to you. Okay, one of the first things we're gonna do is air hunger drills. You can get a little paper bag and you're just gonna cover your mouth and nose and you're gonna breathe in your nose and out your mouth. Looks like this. You wanna work on increasing your exhale when you do paper bag breathing, okay? Box breathing is another great exercise. You can basically do this throughout the day. Um, the more you do, the better it will be. It'll calm all of those parts of the brains we talked about down. It'll also activate the vagus nerve, which is good. Box breathing, you form a box with your breathing. So it's in for four, hold for four, out for four, and hold out for four. It looks like this. And what you do is you're breathing in your nose and out your nose, and you're gonna work for a longer and longer exhale. So eventually it would be in for four, hold for four, out for eight, hold for four, and then maybe in for four, hold for eight, out for eight. And you just keep building it up. So you're building that air hunger in you. Another really easy thing you can do, and you can keep it on throughout the day underneath your clothes and no one will even know, um, it's great for the insula and the vagus nerve, is you can get an inexpensive ab belt off of Amazon. And you basically just put it on around your stomach. It can go underneath your um, clothes. So again, no one will even know you have it on, but it applies um, heat and pressure onto all of your organs. And remember your vagus nerve, so it just looks like this. Your vagus nerve comes down and it attaches to all your larger major organs. Um, so that pressure is going to really help. Another thing you can do throughout the day, and no one will even have to know, is pelvic floor drills. So your bathroom muscles. You basically pull it up just a little bit towards the um, towards your belly button, hold for a little bit, and then relax and pull it up. You can do this with the box breathing. You can just do it while you're on conference calls. No one will know. 
But um, believe it or not, that is great for the brain. Okay, another thing that you're probably not familiar with is saccades. Saccades are when your eyes jump from one target to the other. So right now I'm doing saccades side to side. Now, when we do a saccade to a remembered target, it activates part of the brain that we wanna activate. So right now I'm gonna look forward and I'm going to see where my finger is and I'm gonna jump back. I'm gonna take my finger away and jump to where it was. And I'll change it. I'll jump to a new place and then I'll remember where it was and jump. And you wanna do both sides as well. Now, if I were, I work with people remotely and if I were doing this in person, we would test each cranial nerve, we would test each part of the brain and I would be very focused. So I'm just giving very general information um, for people. You may be better on the right side, you may be better on the left side. Um, and remember, I'm not a medical doctor. This is just information, things for you to try. I just practice applied neurology. Um, another great thing that works is a cheesy grin or a clown grin. So you keep your lips shut and you're gonna lift the corners up like this. And if you add in a cough drop, I have an orange one, and you smell, you get those cranial nerves too. So it looks like this. And remember, you want to do both sides. Another great one, not only for um, different parts of the brain, but also for cranial nerves, is a tongue around the world. So in between your lips and your teeth, your tongue is going to make a circular motion like this. And you're going to, every time you come, you're going to try to go a little bit deeper and get a little extra molar while you're doing it. I'll just do it one time to each side, but you want to do four or five at a time. So it looks like this. And you try to keep your head still on that. You'll notice that you might want to try to move. Just try to keep your head still on that. Another um, thing to do is tongue twisters. Susie sold seashells at the seashore. Peter Piper picked it up, you know, that type of thing. And brain games. Believe it or not, that is going to activate the parts of the brain that we want to do. Now, remember to do at least 15 minutes of these a day. So it was really easy just to pop that ab belt on and leave it on and get 15 minutes of that. But try to do some of these other things as well. Also remember that it's really important to keep doing these things even after the parosmia disappears, okay? Many, many people have said that it can come back. So we need to increase those neural pathways and we need to make them strong again. One last thing that I like to do is um, I have a frequency device and on here is smell morbid and taste morbid. So every day I have this running for at least an hour. I do COVID-19, I do smell none, taste none, smell morbid and taste morbid. And I just play the frequency and I don't even have to um, listen to it because it is kind of annoying, especially when you have a few on there, but it has my name up top. And um, that's been really, really helpful as well. All right, that's all I have today. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I hope this helps and good luck.